All right. Anyways, so, it should go out, okay? Okay, thank you, Rich. This meeting, please come to order. Shall we review the minutes of the last meeting? Do you have those, Adam? Uh, I do not. Um, I wasn't sure if Nathan was going to be doing that or not. Um, if he, if not, I can put them together. Otherwise, uh, looks like he just joined on the line. Yep, I'm here. I'm not sure what you were talking about before that, but I heard my name. Uh, meeting minutes. Okay, um, I didn't put them together. I just had, uh, you know, we went through the nominations, uh, but I can send something out. Yeah, so we went through nominations, talked about what uh, what we should have done for today, right? Uh, goals, objectives of the of the group. So the minutes don't have to be anything. Um, hopefully, it will have just kind of a sense of what um, you know was talked about. Okay. Uh, should we address some unfinished business that we had planned to discuss today uh, on the agenda? Sure. Okay, so we had, uh, thank you, Adam, for preparing the agenda. Um, the first thing to address is the survey. And I think the best way to address the survey is to remind ourselves of the goals and objectives that you had given us as well as the seven year action plan. So I had sent some items to you, Adam, in hopes of just simplifying the information. I don't know if it overcomplicated it or simplified it, but um, at least for, for me, it was um, a way to review the material uh, and to go through the survey the one that I was able to open. Uh, I, I wasn't able to open the others. I don't know if others were able to open the one from Burlington. I know it was a large file, so it might have been just been small on there. And I can resend it out if you, if you like. So, um, does anyone have anything to uh, to say about the survey? Uh, what was helpful uh, as far as the Shrewsbury example goes, the Burlington example goes, uh, or what was sent via email from Adam? I was also not able to open the Burlington file. I can uh, I can resend that. Hopefully, it'll I can try to. Um, on the actual file. Okay, I believe their link that actually on the Burlington website had was also not working. So uh, I tried both avenues and had no success. But I, the Shrewsbury example was terrific. So I don't I don't know how redundant the two would be. But I'm sure there are a lot of similarities. They, they tend to ask the similar types of questions. Right. <clears throat> I know last meeting it was suggested to keep the survey under 20 questions. I don't know if we, we still stand with uh, under 20. Uh, I tried to condense from the Shrewsbury file questions that were, uh, you know, almost verbatim from the Shrewsbury file uh, to only 12. But I, I'd imagine some of you might have more suggestions other than 12. Um, it was in the file called uh, Auburn Survey, at least as my as as I've written. Yeah, I Twelve. Have that up on okay, screen. great. I think twenty questions is enough. Yeah, I I agree, um, Mark. That that's a good if we keep it to right around twenty. That that's a good number. Were there any um, board specific questions or anything that the um, other committees would want to see on here? Uh, 
Adam. I have a comment from uh, the Board of Selectmen. Uh, what about from a planning perspective, Steve? Uh, so from a planning perspective, we did not discuss this at all in the last meeting. I was planning to have some discussion uh, tomorrow if possible. Um, but I, I do know that uh, reading through it, it does take planning into account. Uh, just uh, I'll, hopefully we'll get to a point where we can share this out and get some of that input. But I think, again, having 12 currently and um, space for some more, I just didn't know if anyone had heard anything. No, I intended to bring it up with conservation um, in our meeting Wednesday. I did discuss it briefly on our site walks over the weekend, but I was going to bring this to their attention, um, see if I can get some input. I forget who had mentioned last time about the um, ADA, the, the review that Auburn was now undertaking or how I can I can speak on that. for the town. Um, who was that? Who who had more information on that? Um, I I found some information out. Um, I had was on the committee that was putting that together. Um, it's been complete. The consultant has completed us gave us a final product. Um, and I did speak to the state on um, utilizing that uh, plan that this consultant gave us as what we need for. The open space plan, and she said it should cover 90% of um, the material. The one thing the consultant didn't touch upon was conservation land. That the consultant only um, worked, only did the study on the schools and um, town-owned properties. So the town mm -hmm. doesn't really have much conservation land. A um, couple of larger parcels that, I, you know, it's not formal conservation land, but I would kind of. Put it in that under that umbrella. Um, so I'll have to kind of figure out how to address those state's requirements for that. So long story short, the mm -hmm. ADA aspect is in pretty good shape for us to do that. <laughs> How should we proceed uh, if Adam? I think you gave us a f completion date to to have the survey disseminated by February, a February date. Was that your goal? I think, yeah, I think that's a good goal. I, I obviously wouldn't want to get anything. Want to get past the holidays first. Um, yeah. That will give us another meeting to um, review it. I think over I the think course of the next, the next couple, couple weeks, weeks, I'll put, put this, this together. together. Um, Google Docs and try to do a formal, do it a formal mm -hmm. and I can send you all for a comment. Um, if you have any particular questions you want to ask, um, that will be a good time to provide them all. If you think of them later, that's fine too. Um, is there anything on top of the 12 that you already gave me? That'll be a help. Uh, I'll defer to anyone else in the meeting to um, add or take away from the questions? So I'm, I'm looking not, the questions. Oh, oh, sorry. You can go, Steve. Oh, I, I was going to say, I'm not sure if it's uh, something we can ask, but just thinking of those um, with uh, non-full abilities, like is there a way that we can inquire about those that might need um, additional amenities? Um, I don't know how to exactly say that, but is that something that we can ask um, in an appropriate manner? So in one of the questions, I, I'm trying to find which question it was, I had added it to what Shrewsbury had given us just to give them a voice. And I'm, I'm just trying to see, uh, okay, so it was question number four asking, Auburn residents to rate overall satisfaction with the following and those items that would have been highlighted are those which I changed or added into whatever uh, survey Shrewsbury had provided so at the very end 
Uh, actually, no, the one, two, three, fourth one in and third uh, for seniors. I don't know if that's enough to get more information, uh, but at least we have some sort of understanding as to whether or not someone is very unsatisfied, very satisfied with what is available. So I guess my question was more around understanding um, the quantities or the, the amount of need for those, uh, whereas we we ask for uh, other conditions, you know, uh, age and uh, household members and stuff like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to go down that road per se. Um, because frankly, if we do any kind of, you know, let's say hiking trails or anything to that effect, I think with the ADA review that was just done, I think that would be done in mind with being ADA compliant. Regardless. I don't think if we saw a little need or a lot of need that would change how that project would be done. Okay. Yeah, new, any new construction is supposed to be meet all the ADA um, requirements. Um, there are occasions when they may not, but for the most part, they all be ADA required. So, shall we keep the language included in question number four? Does that make sense? Is it? Uh, yeah, four was, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. Uh, one thing that I had added to four, and it was the very last item, uh, it, to me as an Auburn an resident, the walkable spaces, footpaths that we've been talking about with the Drury Square renovations, I, I think will come up as a source of contention. I know it's not considered an open space, but as long as people are thinking walkability, accessibility, um, ramps, sidewalks, the conditions of the sidewalks, which was very much the case in the Shrewsbury language. I, I think it was important to add something about walkable spaces, footpaths. Uh, I don't know if that belongs in this survey or if that belongs elsewhere. We can, it can be in a survey. I don't I think that's, that's um, applicable. Um, I will add that uh, the town did recently have a complete street study done. Of it, it went through with CMRPC all the sidewalks and ramps and it kind of highlighted the condition of all of them and which crosswalks were not ADA client shouldn't have ramps or the yellow plate. So, okay. Um, we can leave it in, but we do have a lot of information currently. That's, uh, oh. that's some Thank you. Well, what about a question asking for people's input on what they'd like to see as far as open spaces? Is that in there? I didn't really see anything specific to that. For particular spots that they had in mind? Yeah, yeah just what, what, what they'd like to see. That's a good question. Yeah. So do you mean particular areas like uh, at the Pappas Recreation Complex or Prospect Street or elsewhere? Give examples? Yeah, more hiking if they want more fields or you know, yeah that type of thing the, the questions that i had highlighted were tied to the activity as opposed to the space so would they rather um or you know highlight which ones are most important was it for hiking was it for biking was it for um let's see which number was that Like number five. Was it number five? Well, that's how often do you yeah do you, do you use certain items or certain fields? I thought I had a chart. Now I'm not seeing it. Oh, I know why. Um, yeah, I had sent along a separate actionable objectives box. Uh, as an attachment to Adam, I think he sent that out as a last attachment a couple uh, last week. And I took from some of the very specific itemized objectives that were given to us and tried to change the language, uh, eliminating anything that was more theoretical so that we could maybe provide this information to the public and have them highlight which 
things that are most important to them? Is it goal one, two, three, four, or five? Or if we could somehow squeeze this into one of the questions as a reference point and say, see chart one, or uh, I don't know how complicated we can make this, but uh, does everyone have access to that actionable objectives? Um, yes. So I think that speaks to your question, uh, Scott. Uh, if we could include something about that. Bless you. Um, I don't recall exactly what the capabilities of the Google Docs is, but in how to make it work. Then okay. there are a bunch of creating tables and, and stuff on those on that program. I'd imagine goal two is the most important <laughs> because given the, the information that was received, we've already collected a lot of information about town interests, town wants, what people were expecting. Uh, we have information about the golf course, we have information. I mean, we have goal two really highlights everything that you've given to us as far as what people have asked in the past. Um, hiking opportunities, biking opportunities, swimming opportunities. Um, uh, something was written in the past about having a cultural or community center or bonfire space. I don't know if there was more discussion on that, Adam. That doesn't sound familiar, but um, I'll write it down to make a note. It was it was in one of the iterations of the Auburn plan, and I'm not sure. Let's see. It, oh, okay, it was goal. It was objective number four in in goal four. Objective number five in goal four in one of the iterations of the CD, page 49 to 52 of the Auburn uh, plan. I thought that was interesting. I, I'd never heard of any discussion for bonfire space or community center, but I, I like the idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and all of that, I can't say notice it as a quote, but I've been able to, not, you know, it's an interesting idea. Um, and then something that, uh, I mean, I, I've been discussing with, with people who own property over on uh, the Rotary Beach property, that, that lake over there. Um, what is that, Dark, Dark Brook? No, that's not Dark Brook. What is that? It's Stoneville. Is that Stoneville? I think so, it might be. Um, it's swimmable. That, 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 in any case, the, I know the, the, the property owners aren't very fond of the idea of having a swim beach. So we were passing around ideas and, um, you know, I said, how about something as passive as like a nature center where at least kids can go visit and look at, you know, what was found in the, the, the wetlands in the space. And, uh, then there was discussion around that idea, and I, I hadn't seen that in any of the documentation, but the Mass Audubon, the Mass Audubon Society, I guess, has been pretty active working with the town, showing interest in, in doing something, and I think the Nature Center is an opportunity, so I included it in the link. I, I did not include it in the one that I emailed, but I had noted it in that same actionable item in Goal 2 develop additional recreation, cultural opportunities, community center, bonfire space, or nature center. I don't know. To the people you talked to, did you give any reasons why they didn't want uh, Rory Beach to open up again? It was a hot uh, place. Noise Technology. pollution. Noise, noise pollution. What? Uh, noise pollution. <laughs> From people swimming? Yeah. And really? traffic. Yeah, and traffic coming to it. They're, they're concerned, even though it, it didn't jive, as far as I know, from what I've read, I, I think it was actually a property owner that was originally uh, dumping into the water source, and that's why it was originally closed. It wasn't the public, but that, that was all I could gather from the Telegram and Gazette. 
uh, from, you know, from what was it back in, I, I may have provided a link. Um, so they said that they were also concerned about people coming from Worcester and there being too much riffraff. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it was really realistic, the concerns. And then the, the question came up for parking and infrastructure, but I think uh, as far as I know, there is land that is town owned across the way. Uh, I, I tried looking at the maps. I'm not really that great at uh, addressing the maps, but I think it would be feasible to, to, to have parking. Yes, there is parking. There was parking across the street. Yeah, right. There was a in place in the 60s and 70s. Right. Right. Uh, it was just one family, and uh, for some time, I was... I was interested in just getting people's ideas on Rotary Beach uh, as an Auburn resident. And, you know, I, I would love to see something like that. And all I could hear was very positive notes apart from that one conversation with the property owners. I love the idea. My only question, and this has come up before, is, is funding on, on that project. Um, Find it, yeah. Right. Uh, It'd be cheaper than a pool, I would imagine. Not cheaper. Not cheaper. <laughs> um. Then th there was one item that was addressed in the past coming from the public opinion that we should expand upon or add holes and dining options to the package of golf course i don't, I don't know if that's, that's been done, done. I, I i'm out of the loop adam do you know anything about that um not that i'm aware of um i can't say if i've been exploring um events <laughs> there uh, not only in town but on america yeah. Yeah. I haven't had any events pointing events. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if there's a concession stand there or not. I don't believe so. Yeah, there, there is a small concession stand. I know they had uh, rehabbed it a couple of years ago uh, with the thoughts of having, you know, a little bit more food. But right now, I think it's just hot dogs, um, you know, and, and soft drinks. <laughs> How they add it goes. a new deck. No, no, same nine holes. They've done a great job. They've, um, you know, revamped the entire course, but no additional holes added. Oh, the, the golf course, yeah. I was thinking at the um, the Pappas Complex. There's land there a... behind the golf course that is is prop is uh, town owned, and uh, is that the one that we just recently purchased that? I, I think all of you were talking about it, and I had to look on a map. It's this, um, oh, it's behind it's the golf course. Yeah, yeah, oh, that, that's the road. Yeah. What's the plan for that space? Is that, I know it's passive Current, only. Currently, there is no formal plan. Um, there is that 10 year passive requirement limitation. Okay. Um, I'm not, was it four years in, three years in, it's been at least three years in. Um, personally, I think a lot, expanding the walk and trail would be nice going from where the, the, the trail at the Pappas complex going down by the diversion channel down there. Mm -hmm. Um, it certainly gets one, confusing going in the backyards of some of those neighbors. Yeah. 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 There are some houses down there, that, that, but there is a lot of town on land. Hmm. I think there's okay, a lot. Maybe we look at maybe a, um, a golf, uh, frisbee, a frisbee golf. Uh, golf course like down here. Yeah, I've heard multiple people talk about that, yeah, as a potential use. And that's, I think that will be considered passive. It, it wouldn't be. Um, I guess, I guess it's considered passive, maybe because you're not really um, leveling trees and leveling stuff or um, yields. It's kind of within the, the woods there as the nature, you know, as the, the land lies. 
Um, you know, there's no set plans at the moment. It, it, it's funding is a, a part of it, but I think that's a certainly a good possibility. This this golf course that it's popular keeps becoming more and more popular. Hmm. And it, it'll get more popular because Clearview just closed in Millbury, so um, we'll get you know some of those golfers as well. Hmm. Yeah. Have we addressed the football fields problem? Uh, that was something else noted in the past about adding football fields. Is that addressed by the addition of the new middle school? I know there was a half field added, but I don't know. Uh, if, if that addresses their concerns, potential adherence to a rotation policy. I don't know what that really means. Um, if we've taken care of that action item or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I really don't know on that one. Um, can find out about that. Uh, let's see. The, 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 the high school license plays at the high school. I don't know if they right. like the younger the younger league where they play. Okay. I think the younger leagues play at both fields. Um, if I'm right, there are some games scheduled in the middle school um, and some at the high school. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, as far as the survey goes, uh, adding the language from the actionable objectives, actionable objectives may be possible, even if we change up the format of this atom, but I think uh, Scott was right to include uh, ideas for the public to know uh, what they want to do as far as where they want to do it. And I think that can be accomplished if they, if they look at something comparable to this chart, if they want to address more so the conservation of certain properties or expand upon recreational opportunities. I, I think getting that information from the public would be helpful. I don't know if there's any comment from, from others. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of open-endedness. Um, if it's going to provide more results for us or more information, I know typically with a survey, whoever has to analyze the data, it's nice if you can check a box and be able to aggregate that. But um, at least a couple open-ended questions to provide that feedback would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Adam, who does who 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 does analyze the results? Me. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I when we did the master plan survey, there were a lot of most of the questions had a comment box underneath the question. You added a multiple choice, or I will set up and get comments. So I got a lot of comments that way also. And I mean, most of the questions could probably have something like that. Just full. We don't touch upon something they can have the chance to include it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Not fun for you to tabulate, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Done that. Uh, oh, uh, one thing that I wanted to ask all of you because you're much more aware, having been long-term Auburn residents or your town planner, Adam, um, what we have actually accomplished. It, I had a list of things that were already written out, but I know we've already started a dog park. We closed the Mary Stone School, Angelou Bancroft School, built a new middle school. Just to include language to, to show how much Auburn has really accomplished thus far uh, as part and parcel with the survey itself to show people that you know, things are getting done and we are taking people's considerations uh, seriously. Um, I don't know if there's a list that you've already completed, Adam, or if you can add to what I've done. I, I know it's incomplete as, a, as of now. I haven't begun that particular task of analyzing the, those goals. That's something I want to do 
um, in the near term. Um, mm -hmm. I think what I'd like to do, um, I did this in a previous position with CMRPC, but doing the housing mitigation plans. One of the requirements even I had was to compare what was done in the past and what's going to be done. So it was just like a big chart that kind of analyzes what we're doing. Are we going to continue to carry on that goal, even though it wasn't accomplished to carry it forward or, or actively working towards it or just kind of an ongoing path? So it's a spreadsheet that way. Yeah, yeah, that was, was actually, actually a really, really helpful attack that you sent along uh, with the goals and objectives written out as far as where the funding source, uh, who, what the funding source was, in what year out of the seven year plan it was planned to be completed. I don't know if everyone else had an opportunity to look at that, but that was really helpful to get more information um, to see you know, what we've done and uh, what has yet to be done and if we were on on target with the, the timeline. It looks like a lot has actually been done or addressed. Yeah, it does seem like a lot was done. There's always a lot more to do. Yeah. <laughs> so back to the survey item, does anyone else have a question that would uh, he or she would, uh, he actually, it's only uh, man, sorry, uh, that you would like to see be added? or a question that you would like to revise or take away from the 12 that were, were provided? Well, like I said, I think I'm gonna uh, present this to the Conservation Committee this Wednesday, uh, get some feedback from them and see if uh, there's something specific that uh, that committee wants to address. Mm -hmm. and, and so I might have something more later in the week. Great. All right, I'll, I'll try to put this all thing together in the next week or two um, to get out here. And then if you see it in a different form, I might jog your thoughts as to adding some more questions. And I'll try to find, put this together as the ball point. In. May, may I ask your opinion, anyone, uh, about question number three as to what people would be willing to do in order to make changes or address unmet needs in Auburn? Uh, the language comes from the Shrewsbury example, and I, I don't know if this is specific enough what has been provided, or if we want to get more specific or take something away about uh, tax increases. Uh, can you even discuss money on a survey or taxes? Is that something that we can insert? Uh, because I think people would want to know how much of a cost to them it would be to accomplish some of these unmet needs, uh, to, to address these unmet needs. Can we talk money or not? Okay. Yep, so I think I asked um, in the earlier meeting, just I think we should work on the plan and then talk about funding resources because there is match money and such and then Anything that would require a substantial amount would probably go to town vote. So I hate to okay. have people's minds go right to the money and then start answering uh, in the no, everything's fine, you know, realm because now they're thinking my taxes are going to go up. Yeah, right. I wonder, I wonder if that's, that's something that they would assume in the first place. place. That's, that's my that's my concern. concern. I know I know, I know some, some people who are vocal at the town meetings might might be concerned about funding. So, um, so maybe we address that in the beginning of the survey and say, you know, if funding wasn't an issue, which yeah. items we want to look at. I like that. That's, that's a good idea. Funding wasn't an issue. <laughs> I mean, I think we'll see some of those things that haven't progressed as far um, from the original plan are due to funding. Um, and again, prioritization from what has come back and uh, the, you know, members of town have decided what they want to pursue further. Mm -hmm. See what's viable and then see what, you know, where the home run swings would be. And I mean, I don't want to put our top priorities to be all the far-fetched ones that we know are going to be tough funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was at Hadwin Park the other day and I saw there was a sign 
uh, that funding improvements to the facility was provided by Land and Water Conservation Fund. D do we have any affiliation with this fund? It says uh, it was a group with Worcester, the Land and Water Conservation Fund. I don't. It sounded like it would be very fitting for Auburn, but I, I don't. I've never heard of it before. I haven't heard of it before either. Um, I know Conservation Commission and Nathan can probably speak on this. I think has a fund, but I don't know. Our bosses, and I think they're kind of limited by what they can use it for. Yeah, yeah there, there are some limits, limits on it, uh, and that is not the name of it, so that that is something different uh, altogether, I believe. Um, but yeah, I, we've reviewed that budget and, and trying to, you know, either um, update some of the space that we do have and make it, you know, potentially walking area or, or a learning area for children. Um, so. That, that may be something that, you know, our question coming back is maybe we can look at using one of the areas that we already have for something like that. Yeah, because they added ramps that, that overlook a wet uh, a wetland. I mean, it's beautiful what they've done. It's it's handicap accessible. They improved their playground. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. But um, I don't, yeah, if, if you have any affiliation or know of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, I didn't know if it was something to look into, but... That's that's a later piece. That's that's not even a concern right now. <laughs> what was the next item on the agenda, Adam? Uh, we have addressed goals, objectives, seven-year action plan for the most part. Um, Let's see. Did you? Um, The the review open space survey review 2014 open space plan goals objectives and some your action plan and then identify priority preservation areas. I know uh, yeah. I, I had put together a little list, but I don't know how complete it is from the information you had originally given to us. Uh, there were two line items from the Central Mass, the CM, CMRPC, the yeah. Central 13 Prioritization Project. You guys had uh, located Prospect Hill, Relington Brook Trail Connection, and the Leicester Street po property. Uh, but I don't know if that's if that's a complete list or if there's more to it. There were assessments of habitats as well with the biomapping. That was kind of helpful and interesting to look at. Um, but I know there's the, the the old landfill is what's off off of um, Gloucester Street. I don't think there's any particular plan for it aside at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Just that as is. You kind of limit it to what you can do with something, something like that because of its old use. There's, um, what is it, the uh, off of 20. The, the yeah. Granger Cliffs? Yes. Is that what it's called? Uh... Yep. That's, I forget how many acres, it's 40 or 50 acres I want to say. If I, you remember correctly, that's all town on land. Um, from what I understand, it's pretty steep up there. So um, the developing it is, will be a challenge, which I think is why it was the town has it. Mm. Uh, I think it was gifted to the town. I could be oh. mistaken on that. It's a um, weird area. Is it on the Oxford? Yeah. It's on the Oxford line? Yeah, I'm the line. Is it? Oh, no, well, it's towards the town. Okay. Huh. It's behind DHAs and Home Depot. Okay. So what are we what are we trying to prioritize here? Like land we don't want to be touched, lands we want to acquire, lands we want for specific uses. Mm -hmm. What's prioritization mean on this? On on the actual. I took from the language of the actual uh, documents that were given. So prioritization, I, 
I would imagine we have to figure out how we want to use the land passively or actively, or if we want to conserve it as part of the conservation efforts that were listed in the goals and objectives. So maybe we could have an ABC conservation, passive or active. Uh, I, I don't think that language would be very helpful to the public. However, I think we just need to be clear about that. Uh, having an understanding of what has been eliminated uh, as non-active lands. I know the biomapping and assessments that have been performed, the soils weren't the right conditions and they were too close to certain properties to have active um, active developments. And I'm sure Adam, you can speak to that a little bit more as far as parking requirements, traffic concerns. I, I know certain areas are, are dead no's uh, for active developments, but passive opportunities, if we give a different designation, that may be helpful as opposed to active, and then maybe one for conservation. Does that, does that make sense, Steve, or? Um, Yep, that works. If, if you sent it, I apologize. Do we have a list of all the areas we're talking about? I, I, so I have a list. There, was some, there was some list, and that's why I was asking, like, because I know we talk about potential land to acquire as well, and I didn't know if we're supposed to identify that. And I don't know what we have acquired and what we haven't uh, uh, apart from Southfold Road. I, do we purchase anything on Prospect? Or do we already own that? <laughs> um, nothing on Prospect at Fraser um, Cliffs, like there is, is kind of off Prospect. Um, I don't know when that account, all I can tell you. Um, took possession of at least a parcel of it in uh, 2001. Okay. So it was just taken apparently by eminent domain. Mm. And there was, there was a telegram like, that article about that actually in the Greater Worcester Land Trust president or someone in charge. I already started mapping out trails over there and was really hoping to work with Auburn. I don't know if he's gotten back in touch or not, but I thought that was uh, that was helpful to know that he already mapped out some trails over there. Yeah, I haven't spoken to him. I, I did see that article um, a while back. Um, I know they had been doing something, I think, with Mass Audubon also, but nothing, as far as I know, before, nothing constructed. Yeah, I don't know what the slope is like that, but what I've heard is just that it's very steep back there. So any like commercial or residential development will be challenging. Where do you access that from? Yeah. There is that the SS map. So this is what I play with. <laughs> oh, there's a looks like our no paper street, maybe off of Oxford Street South that leads back there. Yeah, that's definitely uh, paper. I, I haven't been back there in about a year or so, but I don't know of any road back there. There's no road. Um, there's an access from Route 20, and there's an access from Oxford Street north and south. That's part of the tip. If you look at this on your screen, there's access that on the north side there. Yeah, but yeah, okay. So you can. There is access back there. I just there's no there's no road. I don't, I don't think there's a path. If there is a path, it's it's probably just an access path. Is, is there a new water, water tower over there, there too? I, I, I just drove, drove by there and I just realized it was a water, water tower. tower. Is that new or is is that just old news for me? I, being new to the town, they it looked just, brand new. Uh, it, it's yeah. They just built one. They tore out an old one and built a new one, or are building oh. a new one. I think that's hmm. that may still be out of construction. I'm not, not sure of the status. Okay, yeah, they were they were working on it when I went by, so I don't know if it's under construction. The the list of areas, I don't know if this is helpful, um, Steve. Steve, since you had asked, I I um 
I can give you the page numbers, but I also sent it as a very complicated agenda to Adam that he, he simplified for me. So if you want to resend that out, it's under the identification of priority preservation areas and assessment of habitats, line items two and three. Um, and I, I go through everything that the town had highlighted as being either passive or active areas. Um, and just quoting from the, the resources, the Northeast 90% of recreational resources in Auburn are located in the Northeast quadrant of the town between Route 20 and Oxford Street. Despite having the highest residential density, this area has the greatest concentration of town owned open land. So, so that, that seems to be a very key area for development, which Adam's already said. Um, so that, that was already assessed as part of the biomapping and habitat mapping. Then they do other quadrants, southeast and southwest quadrants, um, northwestern. And um, there's also some reference to South Auburn around Eddy Pond and West Auburn noting that Dark Brook Reservoir in the land to the west of it um, also has some land, but uh, I don't think much because there's not much information about that. So if, if you want to resend that, Adam, that would be maybe maybe helpful to just have that list or if you want to simplify it into a list. Yeah, I, I, can, I can resend it. Or I could make an easier list. I'll put something I'll put together. together. Is it Is helpful it to, ask to ask the public, the public very, very precise, precise areas, areas where they, where they, where they would, would like to see development, development either, either passive, passive active, active, or conservation? Or, conservation? or is or that... Is that um, is that, is that information, information that we would, that we would like, like to review, to review in, terms in terms of public, public opinion, opinion or is that, that something that, that should, be should be left to conservation, to conservation efforts? efforts. Um, without, without getting, getting to, to like specific, specific locations, locations I, think I think the general, the general area, area of town that, that people would like, like to see amenities, amenities would be, be useful. useful. Um, um, I know I mentioned a lot of the Fields and such from one area of town, town, but there's but other parts, parts of town, of town that don't have much of anything. anything. So that might that be might be might be useful. useful. Yeah, well, yeah, well, so what, the, what, so what kind of language near, near the center of town or near other? I think the quadrants work well. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that seems to me the, the town is really split with the highways and the four pieces. I think that kind of makes sense to leave it out that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other, any further comments? Okay. I think, I think we've, we've addressed, addressed the identification of needs. How about, about the expansion of existing trails? Uh, if anyone has anything further to say about the trails, locations, or, or uses. I can I'm nothing. I'm, I'm really more relying on seeing what the survey comes back with and what the residents, you know, I mean, especially for like needs and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say this has been in the back of my mind for a while. It's kind of a long shot to do, but I like mentioned the trail from Tapas. Auburn is part of the um, Blackstone, the National Corridor, the National Park, and there is a bike trail that's trying to connect from the Worcester, the new um, visitor center in Worcester, all the way down to Providence. It's yeah. a good it's complete. It would be nice if Auburn could connect to that somehow. Mm -hmm. but, but 
that, that trickled across. If you have it on your screen, the um, 146, right? Yeah, the what visitor center is up off 146. I don't think you can see it on this map. Yeah, up here. Aqueduct area. Right? The trick would be to try to cross either 20 or 146, and you get the railroads in the river. So it would be quite the yeah. challenge, but it would be nice some you know someday in the future to connect to that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know Hopkinton did it over the pike, right? Or was it 495? Uh, they recently completed that project and that, that, that came out beautifully. I don't know what kind of cost that, <laughs> that required, but they, they do cross rivers and the highway, uh, not, not the railroad as far as I know, but then um, Milford does cross the railway. So, so it, I mean, it's feasible, but I just, I don't know how. <laughs> There's um, there's some federal funding that one town or not only has a, a group trying to get to connect a stretch of the bike paths, and it was in the millions and millions of dollars, three or four million, anyways, not more. Mm -hmm. So that was just for like a, a very small piece of it, plus you know maybe a quarter mile, half mile. To, to me, I mean making. Auburn more bikeable is, is an extension of the Drury project. I know that's a very specific area, but all the language surrounding that conversation about making it a more accessible town, a more interesting town, I certainly think having a link to this large uh, bike path would be really great. I, I think it would make Auburn a, a lot more uh, valuable. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, should we include some language then about uh, potential links, or it, is that not even really getting that into people's minds? Maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, I mean. I wouldn't worry about putting that in the survey or anything. I think as long as it's mentioned in the goals or objectives or you know the, the action plan yeah. to even just the study, the reading yeah. the study. So that's that, a perfect seven-year plan. I mean, that's if you can find the funding for that, that's that'd be that'd be incredible, especially along the Drury Square plan. Yeah. Yeah. So that will be interesting to hear from people. I wonder if it's going to be. <laughs> I bet it would be that. Everyone wants biking and swimming. <laughs> they want both, probably. Um, no taxes. <laughs> yeah. There was there was talk about linking of um, the open spaces. Um, is there any other obvious connections that um, we should be looking for? I mean, I haven't seen a map of everything and how we uh, get connectedness to that. How about the Army Corps of Engineers in, in Oxford there? Because we're not that far from that line, especially if we're looking at that Prospect Street property in the Granger Cliffs. I mean, just down the street, you were saying, Adam, there's that, that uh, the, the rail trail, or I, I know it's, a, it's at least operated by the Federal Corps, uh, the, the Army Corps of Engineers. I don't know if, if that's a potential link there. Yeah, the hot, that's the Hodge, Hodges Dam. Yeah. Area, so. There is, you know, if you have your map, if you have your screen up, I got my, my map going. There is an abandoned railroad trail that stops behind the, the middle school uh, and goes into Oxford. It's behind, runs along Blake Street, those of you familiar, and cuts across Route 20 down by Cumberland Farms. And then it meanders down 12 down and connects eventually to the Hodge mm -hmm. Dam. And that abandoned railroad actually runs as far as Broomfield West. I uh, stopped following it after I got to Broomfield, so it might go farther west. Yeah. But that's that's a potential um, connecting to Oxford. It's certainly in the realm of possibility. That would require again a study. Mm -hmm. Who who performs those kinds of studies? Would that would that be the the, the, the town of Auburn or some outside? 
it, it's probably beyond my um, capability to go by myself. I probably have to um, apply for a grant, um, hire a consultant, whether it's CMRPC or uh, some other planning consultant that has the means. A study like that would require um, a fair bit of mapping, some surveying, probably some um, certainly some public outreach to talk to the abutting neighbors, um, as well as the owners of the abandoned trail. Hmm. A lot of the, the trail still owns part of it, and then um, the water district owns part of it, at least in Auburn. I don't know who owns it in Oxford. So, hmm. Great, uh, so looking for um, grants is probably the way to fund something like that. So would that be more feasible for walking or for biking or either or? Um, it, I guess it would depend <laughs> on the grades, on what the condition is, on how well it's going to be paved or gravel. Um, <laughs> I think that would just um, depend. I think the goal would probably be both, but that may not be feasible. It, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, is biking considered active because you have to pave the area? An active kind of form of recreation? I would assume so. I couldn't say for sure, but that would make sense anyways. A lot of your, you know, adding impervious surface that adds complications. Right. Three hundred plus units going up on Blaker soon. Um, so a walking area or any kind of recreation area up there sounds, I think, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this would be right across the street from the entrance to that new uh, development. That was kind of my thought um, when I came across that the band in railroad was having that as kind of a walking trail to the middle school, mm -hmm. even as kids in that development. Mm -hmm. It's, it's half a mile, I think. It's not, not that far. Certainly doable in the nice weather. Yeah, it just goes right behind Crystal Caves and into the middle school. I, I walked it as a kid. Uh, I grew up on Tinker Hill. There's a new development going in there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I just got uh, last week. Hmm. 320 units. Wow. I thought, I thought that was wetland, wetland back there. there. I, 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 I could swear, swear it's always, always, isn't it always flooded, flooded back there? It's definitely a flood zone. Uh, it's at the end of Blaker, uh, up on the hill. Oh, so there is some in the okay. in the back, but they're um, they're not going to infringe on any of the conservation land or the wetlands. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, any further comments on on uh, the survey? Should we? Uh, address new business, Adam, or do you have something else that you wanted to address as far as what was um, dispersed here? Um, nothing else for the survey or anything. Like I said, I'll, I'll work on um, next week and get it out to the top for you. Um, I got a couple of things for a member update, a uh, town plan update when you get that. Okay, should we move to discuss new business? I'll make a movement, uh, a move, a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to move to new business. We'll make that motion. Um, anybody have any business? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no new business. business. I, I like the, I like where we're headed with this. Um, what's, what's our timeline, timeline for the survey? Um, I like to have a, you know, a draft for the next meeting, whether you could be in it's also with the guys, um, to get in the roll out by, say, let's say February, put it out all of February. And hope to have um, a decent response to discuss in the March meeting. Mm. Adam, is there 
anyone that needs to review the final draft before it goes out, or is this committee the one that can send it? This committee and, and me. I okay. may have a couple of people proofread it in, in, in town hall here just to get a, you know, another set of eyes, but it's, it's this committee's uh, jurisdiction. Thank you. Makes sense. Shout out to you know Auburn Youth Football, Auburn Youth Basketball, some of the other uh, organizations in town to get some of their input uh, for the survey, or um, kind of wait until after. And I'm just thinking, even the Elks Club, you know, it's the Rotary Club. Some of those we could get some valuable input from some longtime residents. Is the Rotary Club still active? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, <laughs> I have to try to get in touch with them, but <laughs> okay. Huh. Uh, how do we uh, how do we actually disseminate the survey? Uh, I would imagine there's a link. Yeah, there'll be, yeah, there'll be a link. Um, it'll be you know on the the web town website on um, the town's Facebook. If one of you are on the people of Auburn page, um, distribute it that way would be helpful. I think that would help get the get the responses up because I don't know how many people actually look at the town web page for to do surveys. Um, mentioned it at the meetings. Um, there's three of you are on other committee meet, committees um, in Auburn Cable. I can ask them, you know, put up something. Uh, we can, uh, I would say, have higher copies, but there really isn't a whole lot of, um, there aren't any people really, for the most part, coming into town hall or the library or anything. Otherwise, I would have distributed some higher copies. Adam, do you know if the, the, the kiosk is still open? Yes, it is. Town hall? Yes. You can put some there, maybe. Yeah, we can have higher copies there. It's a good idea. Is is any is there a conflict of interest to to I, I'm not on Facebook any longer, but uh, if one of you has a personal profile, is is that is that unethical to share a link to say like a oh, private no. Auburn group? Yeah, no, I'm going to put it up on on both of the Auburn sites, and I'll put it up on my own Facebook as well for sure. sure. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Scott has more friends than I do, so that's going to go a lot further. <laughs> Quickly changing things. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. All right. So, uh, does that complete all business that we were to address today? Uh, I've got a couple of um, updates for you that that. Um, Kind of tie into this committee, so it does, does tie in. Um, so the town was recently awarded a uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness grant. Some of you are already familiar with this, um, but part of the grant um, includes an education piece for the Leesville Pond residents uh, and the, those applying properties. It's to try to um, educate the public about. Um, impaired waters and how they can, what they can do to help improve it. Um, we're going to be partnering with Worcester also, um, so it'll be the whole uh, pond. Um, a consultant, Foster O'Neill, that's helping us all put the material together. Um, so that's going to be coming very rapidly. That's a project that has to be done by the end of June, so we've got less than seven months to wrap it up. So. Um, I'll share that more information when it comes available. I really just put this out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, also, the um, demographic information that is in the 2014 plan I will be updating over the next month or so. Uh, the U.S. Census Bureau was released in a 2019 um, American Community Survey um, on Thursday. So I'll have the most up-to-date information available. Starting later this week. 
Yeah, I already mentioned the EA play. I talked to a woman at the state who um, will be reviewing the play and said that the transition plan is it will be be fine to use for, for that piece. Um, and finally, there will be hopefully in the next month or so um, a kind of a survey. It's not really a survey, but um, CMRPC is doing a conceptual redesign of Garda Park. Um, there's going to be some kind of public outreach. They have created this kind of tool where you can click on uh, different parts of the park to see what it might look like with the different uh, amenities. Um, just to kind of um, get some input from the public, and I'll be sharing that when it comes out. Um, but hopefully, we'll have it in the next month or so. The deadline on that for is February um, 28th. So it should provide us some useful um, information, some kind of different ideas of how to better utilize that park. And is that by the fire station? Is it at the fire, the fire station? Yes. Okay. Um, I know some of the ideas include a bridge connect over um, the dam connecting the library to the park. Um, includes um, the, the, the sidewalk actually connecting to the sidewalk. Right now, the pathway inside the park does not connect anything. Um, the accessibility, you know, the, the rocket, both rockets, the, the Polaris missile, which um, it's not really historically accurate, but that's besides the point. It's a nice feature. Um, it's rusty, so as well as the historical um, guarded rocket, which you can't really see from the roadway, but it's pretty rusted out. I just, the geese like to get up on the grass a lot. So there's a lot of, um, it's kind of messed up there, so hopefully this will kind of set us on the path of um, improving the look of the park. So that people can enjoy the look of reliant medical. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it will pair well with the with Auburn Street being being redone. So if we can hopefully source some funds for, for that in the future, that'll be that'll be nice. The reflections off the water are beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Is 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 that the plan also, or is it a separate item of the Drury Square project to put in the um, the carous uh, I don't know uh, gazebo? Is it a gazebo going in? Um, that or is that just was potential? In, so that was in some of the plans. I don't know if that's going forward or not. Um, I haven't talked to uh, W about that recently. Um, I, that was supposed to go next to the new. Christmas tree, somewhere down there. So I, I can't, can't say for sure if that's, that's, that's still going to be built or not. Hmm. Well, there is kind of a quandary right now because how does the public safety complex, if that goes forward and then the police, the, the, the fire station is abandoned, how does that affect what we're doing over there with the park and with Armour Street? Um, a, lot, a lot of unknowns there, I think. Yeah, yeah there's. there's yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Whatever happens, we want to make sure that we're not doing work that will somehow be not there not anymore there because of the parcel is sold. I think the town I would like the town to keep that parking lot. It owes a lot. That's the end. That's not my jurisdiction. Yeah, because the park is off the left, right? That's town owned, isn't it? Yes. 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 I think that was a big discussion. That will be discussion. Be, held, 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 held if a, if, 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 this, if, if, this, if the if um, the public safety um, complex public safety goes forward, there'll have, forward, there'll have to be other things ironed out. Other things ironed out. Can I ask one of you? Can uh, I ask one of you? Uh, this, uh, this is just an aside. I had a note here. The former landfill the former site, land on, site on, on, on Rockdale or Rochdale. Rock, 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 it is that it is now that now developed with developed the with solar the solar the solar the field. field i know that, I was, know approved that was approved to be developed, to be developed I, think I think last year, year. did that, did that go, go in there, there 60 acre parcel, parcel of, of solar fields that was on the private land correct yeah. yes sir. on the same correct. side or across the street 
Um, There's hills on both. Is it two of us? Thank you. It's 430 Archdale Street. So, or 340. Oh, 340. Doesn't the police. Sorry. Doesn't the police have a shooting range up there? 430. I don't know about the shooting range. Um, it was 430 Archdale Street. It's on the opposite side of the way, though. Okay. Okay, that's what I, I couldn't get information about where the landfill used to be located. And I know that there was a solar field that was put in there and I see people over there all the time. Um, I don't know if they're mapping out hiking trails as it is over there by the solar fields or I, I, I don't know. I see, I see trucks there all the time. Um, hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh. Okay, so I'll, I'll make a, a motion to adjourn if we're ready. So moved. Okay. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Do I have to ask if all are in favor to adjourn? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. <laughs> all right, next meeting is scheduled for January 4th. I will try to see if Bill Coral is available that night um, to discuss, answer any questions you may have. He's extremely knowledgeable, which we all know about the town. Um, is 5.30 still good, everybody? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. I may not be at that meeting. I'll try my best. It may be from my phone in a car, though. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thanks, everyone.